everyone and welcome back. As always, I'm your girl, Candy Washington. So before we dive into today's episode, which is dissecting all of the latest, you know, comings and goings and pauses and firings and hirings from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills to Pump Rules, it's put on pause. Is this going to mean it's going to be canceled? What does LVP think? What's going on with Kyle? What's going on with Dorit? We're going to get into all of it. So before we do that, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share. And as we go on, be sure to say hi in the chat box. You know, where are you listening from? What are your thoughts on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills this whole season? Drop it down in the box below. Let's have a really fun and lively chat, you guys. So let's start out with our first story. So PK and Dorit Kimsley are doing some damage control after the Daily Mail dropped the bomb that Dorit was allegedly put on blast by the producers. The rumor is the producer said to Dorit, you will be demoted to a friend of if you do not tell the truth about the state of your marriage to PK. Has he moved out to a hotel? Are you guys separated? Are you getting divorced? You need to come clean. Don't forget, word on the street is that allegedly the producers told Kyle the same thing, except for she would be fired if she did not tell the truth about her relationship with Morgan Wade. But let's dive into the damage control that Dorit and PK are doing. All right. So this is according to Radar Online. It says... Dorit Kimsley's marriage to PK is in a positive place with the source connected to the couple telling RaiderOnline.com that they are good and happy despite a false report he moved out of their marital home and into a Beverly Hills hotel. As the outlet um, exclusively reported, Dorit and PK still live under the same roof with their two kids with an insider sharing there is no truth to the accusations he left their family mansion and faces as she faces demotion from housewife to a friend if she doesn't speak about their alleged marriage woes. Now, do I believe this? No. I think that the original report is true. I think PK did move out to a Beverly Hills hotel, but I think that has happened months ago. I don't think that is new for them. I think it's new for the producers who are now catching up, but I don't think it's new to PK and Dorit. I think that they have been living separate lives for a very long time. He's been in London. She's been in LA and, you know, he's doing whatever he's doing. She's doing whatever she's doing. I think this is just damage control. My question is this, and I want to know what you guys think. If it is true that PK has moved out. And if it is true that the producers told Dorit, you will be demoted if you do not tell the truth about your marriage, do we think that Dorit is now pulling a Robin by publicly lying and going against producers, the producers' alleged warning? I kind of think she's going to have the same fate as Robin if she doesn't start telling the truth. And I also have... um, a little video snippet from the finale of last season where Dorit is talking to Mauricio about PK and then she talks about her marriage in the confessional. But I think the most telling part of this video is Kyle's face. It's a 28 second clip. So it's really quick. So I can play it twice, but I want you guys to really pay attention to the look on Kyle's face when Dorit is talking to her. I'll play it in a little bit. So Dorit addressed the relationship struggles last season, revealing her marriage was affected after she was allegedly robbed, um, was the victim of an armed robbery, let's say, inside her home while their children slept. The English businessman was overseas, how convenient, when the crime happened in 2022. PK has built a lucrative real estate company in in London and even landed his own reality show selling super houses. Now, is his real estate company lucrative? I don't know. He did get a show, but that show has since been canceled. So they probably do need the money. Beverly Beach is not Beverly Beaching. You know, she's not really designing anything. So yikes. I don't know. 
Also, word on the street is that the house they live in, they don't own it. I think only Dorit's name is on it, but they have other investors who are helping them get their home. They've also had multiple lawsuits against them for not paying their bills and gambling debts. So I would, I, again, I don't like to count people's money, but because it's a part of this conversation about the housewives and it's relevant, um, I, it seems as though Dorit probably needs this Bravo check and not just Dorit, but her children and PK as well. So we'll see. Um, also, you guys, something I was thinking was, you know how on the show there was the conversation with Dorit and PK about where would their children be going to school or not? And Dorit is saying, no, 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 I want to homeschool the kids until they're like 14 or something. And PK is like, no, let's just send them to public school. My thought was this. If they have all of this money, right? They're on the Brill House of Beverly Hills. He's this real estate mogul. He has TV shows. She's, you know, designered all the way out. If they have all of this money, how come the question of putting their children in private school never came up? I think the reason why their children are not in private school is because they probably can't afford it. And I think Dorit is fearful, which to be honest is a is a genuine fear given the state of our country of putting her children in public school. And not that bad things don't happen at private schools. Of course they do. I'm not saying they don't, but private mass, you know what I'm saying, pew pews versus public mass pew pews are very different. So I think the reason why Dorit wants to homeschool her kids is because she's fearful of putting them in public school, but she can't afford private school. And I bet you the tutor that she has come to tutor them is probably way, way cheaper than sending her two children to private school in Los Angeles, which as we know, Los Angeles, Beverly Hills, the Valley, South or Southern California, California in general, same with like the Northeast, whether it's like Connecticut or New York, private school is out of the butt expensive. So I think that's another reason why they've been having these troubles and this tension. I think the majority of their reason is financial. I think the fact that PK had all these lawsuits, I think with the alleged insurance scams, again, that's just an allegation. We're not saying that's a fact with not being able to provide a certain lifestyle for her children. I think she's using the PTSD and the home invasions as an excuse as to why she wants to homeschool her children, where I think, again, this is just my opinion based on everything that we've seen. I think the real reason is they can't afford private school. Um, And I think that the finances, I think Dorit wants to cut bait. I think she wants to get a guy who has real money. I think she wants to get a guy who is younger and probably is more conventionally fit and attractive than PK is. You know, I'm not knocking anybody's body by any means. I'm just saying like conventionally, you know, more hot as like a dude or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I think all of that is going on and all of that is baked in. I think that this whole source to Raider online is nothing but damage control. But my prediction is If the initial report is true, that the producers are saying you need to be honest about your life, and then we're getting reports on a, quote, a source, aka Dorit herself or Dorit's publicist, saying that those aren't true, I think this is going to um, blow up in her face. It's going to have the Robin effect. I, I I coined this in another video. It's the Robin Dixon fraud effect. You know, I think the producers are calling everybody to task now. So I think that's kind of what's going on here. But as always, you know, I want to know what you guys think about this. You know, do you think that PK and Dorit are good? You know, Erica Jane, even at BravoCon last year was like, you know, they're going to be the next couple to get divorced and split up. You know, we saw them go through it this season. There's the Mauricio Alec cheating allegations. We can't forget about that. PK was also spot not wearing his wedding ring. You know, he's been out here dipping it and doing it. And we've heard about him living in a hotel for months now. But I do want to show that clip I mentioned. It's 28 seconds, so I'll play it twice, you guys. I'll loop it. Um, and watch Dorit and Mauricio talk, and then Dorit's going to have her moment. But really look at Kyle's face when Dorit and Mauricio are talking. Really look at her face. And I think that's going to be very telling. Where's PK? I'm like, 
I think my main takeaway from this year is that EK and I have a lot of work to do. I think my main takeaway from this year is that EK and I have a lot of work to do. No matter how hard I try, it feels like he's never going to take me seriously and be as present as I need him to be when I need him. And maybe he'll never change. But do I have to accept that he won't? Can I? I don't know. I think my main takeaway from this year is that he can I have a lot of work to do. No matter how hard I try, it feels like he's never going to take me seriously and be as present as I need him to be when I need him. And maybe he'll never change. But do I have to accept that he won't? Can I? I don't know. I mean, I think that speaks for it all. And if you guys are watching this on the replay and the video doesn't play, it's because NBC asked me take it to, to take it down. Hopefully they don't. They haven't been flagging in a while, so fingers crossed. But just in case you watch on the replay and there's no video, that is why. But since you guys are watching live, you definitely get to see it. So, yeah, I want to know what you guys think about that in – and also, I think a good question is, what do we think about the state of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills in general? I'm personally kind of sick of all of these, you know, stories coming out about these actor, actresses, you know, Ben Midler, Chelsea Handler, um, all these weird people who they keep saying might be joining the show, you know, Tori Spelling, which is all a bunch of BS. I'm just like, just tell us who the new housewives are. Hopefully, I that I I hope that they are unknowns. And by that, I mean, I don't want an actress. I don't want another reality star. I don't want a TV soap star. I want an unknown. I want a rich woman, preferably who is married and is this living her rich, wealthy wife life. She's not hustling. She can have a cute side gig. That's cool. But she's not hustling out here. She's not coming on the show to be divorced. And she's not bitter and angry. And she's not broke. Like, bravo, can you just do that? So anyway, let me know what you guys think. Put it down below. And as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. So with that... Let's move on to our next story, which is all about Kyle Richards' daughter. And there are more information being leaked about, you know, Farah's $1 million robbery worth of items stole during her burglary. This is very, very reminiscent of her mother's burglary in her house. Family heirlooms, you know, things that her grandmother gave her, you know, stuff that she, that's priceless, blah, 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 blah. All of this jewelry and bags broken into in broad daylight. Again, I don't want to sound cynical, but at the same time, it just seems a little reminiscent of Kyle's house being broken into, Dorit's house being broken into, insurance pays payouts still having things after that who knows but let's dive into a little bit more of the details that is being spilled about what happened to Farah. but with all that being said you know i'm being a little cheeky i'm being a little sarcastic but it but in reality i am happy that everyone is safe you know if this burglary is real or not because you never know how certain schemes go Either way, I am happy that everybody is safe and no one was harmed, even if I am, you know, being a little cheeky and giving her a little bit of a nudge. Playful, playful. Okay, so this is from Reality Blurb. It says, Farah was, Farah was reportedly robbed of $1 million worth of her belongings, or Farah. I always say her name incorrectly. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm human. It's, it's Farah, right? Farah or Farah? Farah, Farah. Farah was reportedly robbed of $1 million worth of her belongings when thieves targeted her a Los Angeles home with a break-in last Tuesday afternoon. 
Days after it was revealed that the 35-year-old buying Beverly Hills cast member and daughter of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Kyle Richards had been hit with, with a home robbery, sources have confirmed the alleged value of what was taken along with what the thieves got away with. I mean, that's a pretty quick assessment if you ask me, but hey. According to an April 30th report from TMZ, law enforcement sources have confirmed that the break-in is being investigated by the LASD Major Crimes Unit, um, and it did not appear that Ferris' home was targeted. Instead, it is believed that the robbery, which took place when Farah was not home, may have been conducted by a group of South American burglars. You guys, we done heard it all now. So allegedly, the story is her house was randomly broken into by a bunch of South American burglars. At least it's not two scary black guys in hoodies. At least we've moved on from that trope. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, but this break-in gets fishier and fishier and fishier. Is it the same people who broke into her mom's house who called Kyle from jail being like, hey, if you send me some money, you can go to my grandmother's house and get all your stuff back because I'm the person who broke into your house and I kept all of your belongings in my grandmother's house. And now that I'm arrested and now that I'm in jail, send me some money, you can go get your stuff. Because that story made zero sense in the world of sensing. Like in what world would a person in jail call you from jail on a recorded line a, how did they get your phone number? And B, wouldn't you just go down to the police station and say, hey, officer, the person in jail block A just called me and told me they had my stolen millions and billions of dollars, my Birkins and my bags and my mother's heirloom jewelry in their grandmother's basement. basement. Let's go get it. Wouldn't anybody in their rational mind do that if that story had any type of sense to it? Kind of like this story. All of a sudden, Farah's home is just sitting there and these group of South American burglars just so happened upon her house. Come on. The outlet went on to say that the thieves stole sentimental and super expensive jewelry, Omaze bags, designer luggage, high-end watches, and other luxury goods. Doesn't that also sound very familiar? Sentimental jewelry, expensive stuff, all the bags, everything I own. While no, while no particulars were, were given, sources shared that some of the jewelry taken from Farrah's home was passed down from her stepfather, Mauricio Umansky's family. Uh-huh. So now... now <laughs> Now it's the stepfather Mauricio's family's jewelry. They really like to keep it in the family, don't they? They really, I, I feel like her own father was like, keep me out of these shenanigans. Keep me out of these shenanigans. And Mauricio was like, go ahead. <laughs> Maybe I can get some insurance money too, allegedly. It was also noted that Farah, whom Kyle shares with her first husband, was robbed of gifts from her parents, including high school and college graduation gifts and a 21st birthday present. As Real Housewives of Beverly Hills fans will recall, Kyle and her now estranged husband Mauricio were also robbed of around $1 million worth of their belongings when their $8.2 million Encino home was targeted in 2017. So... Mother and daughter just so happened to lose $1 million of essentially the same exact type of items. Uh-huh. It was just devastating. I'm very grateful that we're all okay. Kyle shared with Bravo's The Daily Dish after the break-in. I keep telling myself these are just things. They are. But it still really hurts a lot. My mom left me these things she had collected her whole life, passed those on to me, and I wanted to pass those on, on to my four daughters. Kyle then noted that everything her mother had left her had been taken. But side note, didn't we see Kyle wearing rings that her mom from her mother after the break-in? Did she just happen to have all of those rings with her in Aspen? Or like Garcelle said, the only like the, she doesn't notice jewelry. It just 
the fact that after Dorit's home robbery, she still had hers. You know, Kyle still has jewelry and handbags and is wearing them. Dorit still has jewelry and handbags. You know, now all of a sudden, Farrah's house was not actually targeted, but a group of South American burglars just so happened to know how exactly to get into her house, how to exactly cut off her Wi-Fi, because don't forget, her Wi-Fi being cut off, cutting off any videos um, that was reported before. So, and I don't know why cutting off the Wi-Fi would cut off the video. I think wouldn't Wi-Fi only cut off streaming of the video, but not actually the taping of the video? I don't know. I mean, I don't work in security. Somebody needs to call Teddy Mellencamp's husband and ask him this stuff. But I I am one to think that if the Wi-Fi is cut off, that means you couldn't stream it. But there still should be a copy of it because I'm pretty sure we had video surveillance cameras before we had Wi-Fi. Right? Before the invention of Wi-Fi, we had surveillance cameras. That's why we have footage of of stuff from back in the day. Pretty sure, right? That's just me. So this group of South American burglars just so happened to know that this house had millions of dollars of family heirlooms, Birkin bags, Hermes, all this stuff, how to get into the house, where the stuff was, knowing that nobody was home. It just so happened to be the house of a single woman and nobody was home. No dogs, no husband, no big brother, no father, no extra people. And they just so happen to know how and where to cut off the Wi-Fi. Is this the same group of South American burglars who went to Dorit's house and was so kind to her where they just said, show us your stuff. And she went around and she sold them all the stuff and she put it in a nice little bag for them. She even wrapped it up, put it in a little baggie for them. And they were so nice and kind. They left the house and they left her very expensive iPhone or whatever type of phone she has. Pretty sure it's an iPhone, very expensive phone with all of the contacts, particularly 911, just so happened to very politely place sit down unharmed right by the gate as they so very politely leave the house. Uh Uh-huh. Uh Uh-huh. And then we also saw the video surveillance of the alleged robbers at Dorit's house. They were so calm and collected. They were, they were more like landscapers or gardeners or, you know, architects. They came over and they're like, oh, look at this, look at that. Nothing was broken. It wasn't a smash and grab. Nothing, you know, it was fine. Everything was just easy. They just kind of walked in, talked to her. She showed them the stuff, put it in the stuff, and they left her the thing. These are the most friendly, tropical, South American. These are the most friendly, accommodating, And also very psychic burglars that it just so happens this group of South American burglars knew all of this about Ferris House. We have psychic burglars and we have the nicest and kindest burglars. Like people will rob a person just for their phone. Just for their phone. You will get bopped across your head just for your phone. Walking down the street or you're on the subway, somebody will bop you in your face and snatch your phone. You're going to tell me that people who broke into your house, allegedly armed, ready to take everything they had, ready to take your life and your children's life, were all of a sudden just became these angels that decided to give you back a phone that a burglar would typically what? Rob? Right. Right, right, right. And my question is this. Why is it when normal, nice people have bad things happen to them, like a car accident or being stolen from, insurance companies will do everything in their freaking power to nickel and dime you and not give you anything, even though they know you are a victim, even they know you're injured, even though they know you've been stolen from. But yet these fraudulent people, they are like, oh, here's your here's your $2.3 million payout. That makes sense. Oh, you know, oh, here's here's your million dollar payout. Yep, here you go. But when you get your average person out there who actually needs their insurance money, it is like dealing with the devil. They are so nice to you when you get your insurance, but when you actually need it, all of a sudden, it's like it's their money. 
It's insane. It is insane to me. Where are the police? Where are the investigators? Where are the insurance people? Because this doesn't make any sense. And also, how do the how do the investigators investigators know it was a group of South American robbers? What? <laughs> what? Where did that even come from? What? It just makes zero, 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 zero sense. Absolutely none. But I will be definitely watching, you know, where this plays out, where this goes. You know, in a couple of months, we'll do a Candy Cane deep dive into the validity of this, you know, house being broken into. And I said it in a previous video, but I'll say it again. To be honest with you, my biggest red flag in this whole situation, it's not that the burglars are South American. It's not that the police are claiming this wasn't targeted, but yet the robbers knew exactly where to get all the stuff. Nobody was home, how to cut off the Wi-Fi. That's a lot of very specific information to say that this was a random burglary. That doesn't make any sense to me. I live in my house and I still don't know how to turn off the Wi-Fi and I live here. So you're going to tell me South American burglars walked off the street and knew how to do it? Stop lying. Um, that it's the same exact amount as her mother's. I don't know if maybe that's like a certain insurance package cutoff. You know, maybe it's the million dollar mark. I don't know. Maybe anything over a million, it's a different package because you can get different insurance packages like, you know. I don't know, but it's a very it's 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 alarming to me that it's basically a copycat of exactly what happened to her mother. Pretty much a copycat case. All of that aside, my biggest red flag that this is that there's a fly in the milk that this isn't right is how calm Kyle is about this entire situation. Kyle is way too cool, calm, and collected. Farah's fine. We're all okay. Everything's cool. Like, is she talk? Is she breaking down on her Amazon lives? Kyle literally has a conniption over anything. Having to cross the street, Kyle is having a panic attack. You know, having to pick her Starbucks, you know, drink in line under pressure. She's having an anxiety attack. Kyle can't make a decision. She can't do anything. She acts like she's so frantic all the time. Like the fact that her daughter's home was broken into and she is so chill. It is to me the same exact way PK is about Dorit when he's like, you don't have PTSD. This is ridiculous. This is completely bogus because I think PK is like, but Bubba, you know, but Dorit you knew we made this up for the insurance money. You knew you were not actually in danger. I had the guy leave your phone at the gate. What's wrong? <laughs> what do you mean you have PTSD? The scam worked. I paid off all my gambling debts. They, the insurance company gave us two, $2.3 million, the exact amount I needed to pay off my $2.3 million gambling debt. I was able to do that. The police aren't investigating. I paid some people off. The insurance company isn't investigating. I paid some people off. You guys are being facetious. This is all alleged. Um, paid some people off. We're in the clear, baby. Like, why are you pretending to have PTSD? I don't get it. That's the same vibe with, with to me, with Kyle, who literally will eat a napkin if she has to, like, have any confrontation, being like, oh, she's fine. We're good. And we're hearing nothing about it. Same energy, same vibe. To me, it all feels like the call is coming from inside the house. It's an inside job, folks. That's just how I feel about it. But as always, I want to know what you guys think. Put it down below. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Chocolate chunks of phone equals tracking device. Well, yes and no. People steal phones all the time. All the time, people steal phones. He could have stolen the phone and taken out the SIM card or taken out anything or turned the phone off. You know what I'm saying? Or he could have broken the phone so she couldn't call 911. You know, I just don't think that a robber who she is claiming came into her house with her children and allegedly were armed. And she was fearful that they were going to take her life and her children's life would leave her phone so delicately by the thing. 
if I'm a robber and I'm worried about it being a tracking device, I'm going to break the phone. So she can't call anybody. She can't call the police. So I have more time to get away. Or I'm taking the phone and I'm turning it off and I'm going to wipe the phone, factory settings, and I'm going to sell it because I'm a thief and that's what I do. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's all good chocolate chunks. And thank you for being a channel member. No, I like to, I just saw your, um, your comment and I, um, it was, it was good to play devil's advocate because it was good to like have the other side to it. So I appreciate your comment. It was a good comment and I appreciate it. it was good. You know, it's a good point to make, but I'm just thinking like, if I really am this robber breaking into people's houses when their children are sleeping and I am armed, I think the very last thing I'm going to do is leave the person I am robbing their phone to call 911 on me. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, oof, you guys. I see everybody in the chat. I can't wait to take my candy cane questions and comments. Put it down below. And as always, you guys, let me know what you guys think. Uh, to me, the math ain't mathin'. I think Kyle's robberies, Farah's robberies, Dorit's robberies, they there's something not really working with this. I mean, I said it before, I'll say it again at the end of the day. I'm happy everybody is safe. Whether these are insurance scams or not, again, alleged, I don't know. At the end of the day, I'm happy that everybody is safe. So with that, you guys, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. So let's move on to our next story. Let's talk about, hmm, what do we want to do? Let's do, let's do trouble in paradise. So word on the street is that there is a riff between Kyle and her alleged, you know, girlfriend, BFF, whatever you want to call it. Who the hell knows? You guys know I never bought the whole Kyle and Morgan Wade actually being in a sexual romantic relationship. I've always felt it was PR, M mainly PR for Morgan. I feel like Kyle Richards really was going through it. She really did hear Morgan's music and did reach out because Kyle is kind of stalkery, creepy that way. I think all of that is true. But then I think when Morgan Wade and her friends and her, more importantly, her team, like her PR people, her agent, realized who Kyle Richards was, you know, Bravo TV, NBC, you know, the Housewives, the Hiltons, Paris, all of that, I think they saw it as an opportunity to make money, clicks and views, you know, brand awareness, merchandise, touring, ticket sales, all of that. You know, Morgan Wade being with Kyle really put her on the map. Sure, she was a singer and she was doing her thing. And I'm not knocking that by any means. You have a dream, go out and get it, boo boo. But what I'm saying is there is no way to deny. It is like a fact that Morgan Wade is, quote, the Morgan Wade that everybody knows now because of her proximity to Kyle Richards. I'm not saying she never would have became a star, but the way in which she became a star, however you want to define star, is through Kyle Richards. There's no way in hell I would ever be talking about or know the name of Morgan Wade, except for the fact that she was associated with Kyle Richards. And I think that's the majority, and I think that's true for the majority of people who know Morgan Wade. And that's not taking anything away from her. It's just how the game is played. You know, you are a lesser quote star. One way to rise is to be attached to a bigger star. It's just how it is. All right, now let's dive into this. So apparently there is a riff between Morgan and Kyle. Don't forget that this is on the heels of the report that came out that producers are allegedly telling Kyle, we are going to fire you from the show if you do not bring Morgan on the show and be honest about whatever is going on with your relationship. Is it sexual? Is it romantic? Is it just friends? Whatever the hell it is, you need to be honest about it. Because again, I coined, this is the Robin Dixon fraud effect. The producers, the executives, casting, they, I personally think that they are tired of looking stupid because these housewives 
are out here having living these two separate lives. They have all this juicy stuff going on on social media, on the blogs. We're all talking about it. And then they're pretending to have one life on the screen. And I think that the producers are tired of looking played, basically. Anyway, according to a fan submission, Morgan Wade, oh, this is from Reality Blurb. According to a fan submission, Morgan Wade allegedly revealed that she and Kyle Richards haven't spoken in a long time and she didn't know where she was. At the recent Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion, Kyle shared that she didn't know if she could see herself being with Morgan romantically though fans have speculated to the contrary. Earlier this year, Morgan wiped all traces of Kyle on Instagram, leading viewers to believe they fell out. Kyle is currently separated from her husband, Mauricio Umansky, though she's uncertain about their future. Okay, let's break that one down real quick. Again, right after the reunion aired, i.e. their PR contract was over, Morgan wipes her entire Instagram of everything almost everything and also including all of Kyle. They of course their PR statement is, "Oh, she's just promoting her music. A lot of artists do that." Blah blah blah, get out of here. I personally think the PR contract was over. I think Kyle kind of I think Kyle was regretting how far she went with her separation with Mauricio. I still think she's mad at him. I still think they have issues to work out, but I think at that point Kyle wanted Mauricio back. And I think the PR relationship was over. But because of the fan speculation, because of potential backlash of them splitting at that particular time, everyone's like, oh, is this a PR contract? Was it fake? And I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah, you guys, we've been talking about this the entire time. But I think they did. I think that their PR people and their team didn't want the backlash. That's when we got photos of them together all of a sudden. But Kyle already let it out the bag when she was on Jeff Lewis, basically being like, Morgan is just one of my friends and she's just one person I text in the morning. Like, it's really not that deep or that serious. It's basically what Kyle said about Morgan. Like, she's just a chick I know, pretty much changing her tune on Jeff Lewis. This is all after the season's wrapped. This is all after all the episodes have aired and the reunion has wrapped. Very, very suspicious timing, right? Then we get them kind of hanging out again a little bit here and there. Again, I think those are just paparazzi shots that they call on themselves because they didn't want any negative backlash of the timing of the ending of their, quote, friendship or relationship or whatever you want to call it. Because everyone was like, oh, she was only doing it for a storyline. She was lying, all of that. I don't. I actually don't think Kyle was doing everything with Morgan for a storyline. I think Kyle really, like in her actual real mind and life, was truly going through a crisis. I think when her friend took her own life, I think the state of her marriage, I think maybe um, midlife crisis, maybe a later midlife crisis was kicking in. I think that Kyle truly in her own life was truly going through it mentally and emotionally and physically and everything else. Because, you know, with her eating and the you know, working out and losing the weight and then not drinking. I think Kyle really was going through it. So I don't think that she was using Morgan for a storyline, but I don't think that her relationship with Morgan was actually sexual, but I think she played it up and played into it for clout and for clicks and for attention, which of course would then feed into a storyline, if that makes sense. This is kind of where I land on that. Okay. A fan recently claimed to have approached Morgan in public and asked her about Kyle. Morgan Wade was on the streets of Bloomington, Illinois, said the, said the fan in a submission to Dumas. Um, it's, and she said, I had zero chill and asked her where Kyle was. She said she hadn't talked in a long time and she didn't know where she was. The fan went on in saying, she's so tiny. Meanwhile, Kyle shared a photo of herself at what appeared to be a concert with her estranged husband, Mauricio, and their daughters. In the photo, the family had their arms locked around each other. So they're all at a concert. Maybe this is either Coachella or Stagecoach or something like that. It's very, very cute. In another pic on her Instagram stories, Kyle took a selfie with, her, with two of her daughters and Melissa Platt, an employee at, Mar at Mauricio's real estate firm, Coaster in Coaster on his show, Buying Beverly Hills. I really like Melissa. If you guys watch the show, I, I really like her. So 
basically Morgan is like, I haven't seen Kyle in a long time. I don't know where she is. Kyle is now posting pics of her and Mauricio and the kids doing very family fun stuff, hanging out at Coachella or Stagecoach or Country, whatever the hell it is, and having fun and hanging out, doing family stuff. Now, this is the thing. I do think that at this point in time, Kyle wants her marriage back. And I think the ball is in Mauricio's court because it was either on buying, but I think it was buying Beverly Hills or in some interview, but Mauricio was talking about, you know, whether or not he's going to move out of the house because they were still living together. And he was like, well, you know, like if anyone would move, like I would move out and we would see if like, um, I, if I, if I like miss her and like, you know, w- want it back. And I'm now where she was a couple of months ago. This is where I, this is what I think happened in their marriage. Disclaimer, I am not a therapist. I am not a relationship coach. I'm just a chick who watches reality TV. Okay. But this is what I think <laughs> happened in their marriage. <laughs> this is what I think happened. I think Kyle had a true breakdown crisis in her life. I think she had so many things in her life crumbling at the same time. The death of her friend, um, her husband not being, her husband being booked and busy, not prioritizing her, feeling like she's being taken for granted, which I think for Mauricio, that is business as usual. I think that has always been the dynamic of their relationship where he takes precedent, his priorities, his business, what he wants to do. And Kyle has always been a very supportive you know, ride or die for her, for her husband. Right. So I think Mauricia was just booked and busy business as usual. This is how we do things. We're, we're doing it where I think Kyle maybe turned a certain age. You know, I think she's maybe like 54, 55 now, you know, midlife crisis time kind of kicks in her, her friend passes away suddenly and very tragically in a very traumatic way. She's beefing with her family, with Kathy, um, there's a rumor that her best friend Reed is having sex with her husband Mauricio. You know, that's a lot to handle with anybody. You know, we I like to clown Kyle, bio Kyle and all that stuff, but she's still a human being. So I do think Kyle in her life was going through crisis. And I think that her husband profoundly failed her. I think he didn't really take it as seriously as it was. And I think that he just continued business as usual when she needed something different. She needed the dynamic to change. She needed him to be there for her, which is a, which is a dynamic I don't think they've ever really had. And so then that led her to rebelling against everything because that's what happens when you're in crisis. Before you get to your healing stage, you have that rebellion stage where you are angry, you are mad, you're pushing buttons, you're pushing boundaries, you're acting out. So that's why we get Kyle with the tattoos, with Morgan Wade, with losing weight, with not drinking, with, you know, cutting off friends and all of this stuff and, you know, doing the absolute most. She is rebelling. She is burning it down. She's breaking it all down, which oftentimes is needed. Sometimes you got to break it to rebuild it, right? So she's in that phase. But as you get through that phase, which you should, because the problem is you don't ever want to be stuck in a phase. You don't want to be stuck in rebellion. You don't want to be stuck in your anger. It's okay to move through it, but you don't want to be stuck in it. So I think the more that Kyle moves through it, the healthier she gets, the more settled she gets, the more she heals, she kind of probably realizes, well, wait a minute, I didn't really want to burn the whole house down. And I want my marriage and my husband back. But then you have Mauricio over here who now is like confused and is now himself resentful and pissed off and probably going through his own crisis. You know, his whole company is moving so fast. He has a new reality TV show, all of these cheating allegations. Now he's having Dancing with the Stars opportunities he's never had before. And then Kyle hasn't been there for him the way that he's always assumed she would be because she always has been and that is a bit of taking her for granted right so now he's like well wait a minute you burned down the house I don't know if I want to rebuild this house with you and so that's where I think it comes in where he's like well I would be the one to move out and I would be the one to decide if I miss her and you know um get this back together and to be honest with you it's pretty freaking textbook what's going on between these two I personally want to know 
just because I'm nosy and they're on a reality TV about their marriage and their lives. What was Kyle talking about when she said he did something and all the trust was gone? Because you could tell whatever it is, she had such disgust and disdain for him. I'm like, I want to know what it was. I know what I think it is. I've said it in other videos, but I want to know what it really is because she had so much vitriol and she was like, it's nobody's effing business. Um, excuse me, miss. It actually is. <laughs> Aren't you on a reunion stage for the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? Isn't that literally what your job is? So actually it is my business. Just, just, you know, it, it is actually my business. Um, but I want to know what it was. Like, I want to know what, what that breaking point was, but that's where I think it is for them. I think that Kyle, wants to rebuild but i think he's now at the point where he's like well maybe we really should just break up and separate i don't know why i've always said this i think they won't ever divorce i think they will ultimately get back together it might take more time than i thought but i think ultimately they will end up together that's just what i think i could be wrong i don't really know these people <laughs> But put it down below. As always, let me know what you guys think about this. You know, what do you think about right after the report comes out that the producers are like, Kyle, you're getting fired if you don't talk about Morgan Wade. All of a sudden, Morgan Wade is telling people, I haven't talked to Kyle in a long time. I don't even know where she is. And Kyle is posting family pics with her and Mauricio. I see them getting back together, but I think it'll play out more so my prediction is season three or four of buying Beverly Hills. I think we will have the reconciliation arc of Mauricio and Kyle. I don't think we'll get the reconciliation arc this season of, of real housewives. I think season three or four of buying Beverly Hills. That's where I actually think we'll get the rec the, re the reconciliation arc between these two. That's just what I think. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But as always, I want to know what you guys think. Put it down below. And as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. So speaking of things breaking up to make up, apparently Vanderpump Rules is put on pause. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Now, to be honest with you, I think this is the right choice. Actually, I'm lying. To be honest with you, I think they should just go ahead and cancel it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think they just need to go ahead and cancel it. But let's see what they're saying. And then we'll dive into what I think is going on here with everyone and everything. Like, just go on and let the show go at this point. Okay. So this is according to Deadline, which is like a legit publication. It says... As Vanderpump Rules Season 11 starts wrapping up on Bravo, Deadline has learned that production for Season 12 has been delayed. A source close to the cast confirmed that the show would not be filming this summer, breaking the production schedule's norm. The show had traditionally picked up production during the summer months to coincide with gay pride events in West Hollywood, a weekend where Lisa Vanderpump's establishments like Sir and Tom Tom get a lot of foot traffic. TMZ, which first reported the news, states that one reason for the hiatus is to give the cast a break following the fallout from Scandaval. The cast has been divided in the aftermath of the affair that had Tom Sandoval cheating on longtime girlfriend Ariana Maddox with her best friend, Rachel Levis. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think Rachel was Ariana's best friend, but I do think that they were friends. Let me stop being petty. Okay, let me keep going. Season 11 picked up filming right after those events, and the group was heavily fractured, not allowing them time to process the events amid the intense reactions from the real world as everything played out in front of the cameras. Another potential reason for the break is to hold off on Ariana's return from Fiji, where she will be hosting Love Island Season 6. Earlier this year, Maddox was announced as the, a new host of the Peacock dating competition, replacing Sarah Hyland. According to our sources, the spin off the Valley will not be affected by the Vanderpump Rules hiatus and will continue on its projected production schedule. So that's a spoiler. We know that the Valley is getting a season two, which I honestly think is like a duh. Of course it is. Let me break there. 
a couple of things. Number one, I think either canceling Vanderpump rules, they should just go out and cancel it. But fine, go ahead, you know, take a pause. I also think the reason why the Valley isn't affected is because I bet you Lala and Sheena are going to join the cast of the Valley. So they will be taping that show instead of taping Vanderpump Rules. They could, of course, always tape at the same time, which they have been because we see it. We see Jax on Vanderpump Rules this season. We see Sheena and Lala on The Valley this season. Obviously not as main characters, but they're at events. They are in storylines. For example, um, the last episode of The Valley, we have Messy Messy Boots Janet. Janet is a messy, messy, she's a messy chick, okay? Janet's messy as hell. You have Janet talking about, oh, Sheena called me. Because again, this is called foreshadowing. (laughs) Foreshadowing, you guys. We have, you know, Lala and and, um, Jesse kind of getting into this weird tiff sexual tension thing. We have um, Sheena all of a sudden calling Janet to tell her that there's this rumor on Reddit that Jax is cheating on Britney. Like you needed Sheena Shea to tell you that. You don't have a thing called Google, sweetheart. (laughs) Hello. But they're foreshadowing, right? The fact that Lala and Sheena, they're already baking them in so that it's not going to be this big like, whoa, where did these two new people come from next season? We've seen Lala's interaction with the people. We've seen Sheena in there. You know, she's they're at the birthday parties. They're at this and that. So they have been filming for both shows. But I think that they're going to have main character roles next season. I also think that Lisa Vanderpump is kind of done with Vanderpump rules. I think she's kind of over it. She's booked and busy with everything else. She has Vanderpump Villa. She has um, her new cooking show with Gordon Ramsay. Um, she's opening, you know, Wolf Restaurant and all these other places. So she's opening up restaurant after restaurant. She has multiple shows going on. She is the executive producer of The Valley. So I think that Lisa Vanderpump is kind of a little over Vanderpump Rules, to be honest with you, kind of how we're all over it. You know, I don't hate watch Vanderpump Rules because I don't, A, I don't hate anything or anyone. And B, if I did hate something or someone, I would not give my energy to it. But I watch it out of obligation, not so much that I'm being entertained by it. It's like I'm watching to report on it and I'm watching to know what's going on, like just to know, not because I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like invested in this. Do you know what I mean? So that's kind of where I feel it's going on. So I think that it's smart for Bravo and Peacock and the talent and Lisa Vanderpump and the executives to put more time and energy into the projects that are new and the projects that are working. Because right now, Vanderpump Rules is not working. All right. Although Bravo has not officially confirmed a second season for the spinoff, ratings for this show have been promising. The Valley scored Bravo's best seven-day premiere audience in nearly a decade. With Vanderpump Rules on hiatus for the summer, more of the cast could potentially appear on The Valley. So, yeah, I think that they are going to, I honestly don't think they need to bring Vanderpump Rules back. I think the best way to use their money, use their time, use their resources would be to create a new show. Let's create a new show on Bravo. Let's get some fresh faces. Let's get some unknowns. It, it could be a different premise. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be a repeat of Vanderpump Rules. There's so many quirky jobs out there. There's so many cool microcosms of friendship groups and interesting people. Let's just get some fresh new programming, some fresh new content, some fresh new shows. We don't have to have Vanderpump Rules. That's not something we absolutely have to have. You know, so I do think that um I do think it's time for it to be canceled. I do think that, yeah, I I definitely think it's time to be canceled. I don't think the reason why it's paused is because they are, like the article said, they might be waiting for Ariana to finish in Fiji. I don't think that's true. They, um, They didn't wait for Tom Sandoval 
who was filming wherever he was filming for special forces. And it's not even like, and to be honest with you, Ariana, her persona, her edit, whatever you want to call it was really flat this season. And also it's not clear that she even wanted to come back. You know, she had said it needs to quote, make sense for her to come back. Cause she's, again, she's getting all these great opportunities. You know, she's hosting, you know, Love Island. She's booked and busy. She's got book deals and brand deals and movies and all of this stuff. So I don't think they're waiting for her. I just think that the show isn't working anymore. You know? So who knows? Who knows? And I, I and I think it's more true of, I think they're going to put it on pause and then they will revisit the people later down the road to see if there's something there to salvage. But my guess is it won't be. I think Lala and Sheena will be will fit in perfectly on the valley. I I wouldn't be surprised if Sandoval and Shorts did some type of spinoff on their own, like the Bachelor Boys or something. Cause aren't they like living, aren't they roommates now and and Tom and used to be Ariana's house. At least that's what they said in the last episode that Tom Schwartz was supposed to be moving in with Tom Sandoval. I wouldn't be surprised if they did some weird quirky spinoff where it's like, we're like, you know, dudes in our 40s. <laughs> some Beavis and Butthead type stuff. I don't know. I won't, I would not be watching that. I hope for James, he goes off and does something really big in music. Maybe do like a cool music documentary show or something. I don't know. But I think I think the time for these characters it has it's wrapped. It's a wrap. Like I don't need any closure. I don't need any follow up stories. Like we get it. I don't need a something about her sandwich. No, like we got it. We got it, folks. We got it. I think it's I think it's okay to wrap it up and call it a day. I personally would really love fresh new programming. And if you don't know what programming is, programming is the type of content when, where, and how it plays on a network or show. That's why it's called, it's called um, like the programming, you know, like a program director tells you like when certain things are playing and the type of things. So programming means like the programs, you know, like what is on. I personally would love fresh programming. I would love new shows different premises, new people, new stories. I don't need to ride into my elder years with Ariana and Sheena Shea. I personally don't need it. <laughs> That's just me. That's just me. Um, yeah, but I want to know what you guys think about this. You know, what do you think about it being put on pause? Do you think that do you think that's the right choice? Do you want it to come back ever or do you think it's a wrap? You know, what do you think the real reason why it's being put on pause is? And, you know, what do you think is next for all of these people? Do we care what's next for all of these people? Are we invested anymore? I don't know. But as always, be sure to like, subscribe and share. And with that, let's move on to our next story. Now, this might play into what we were just talking about, which was, you know, Vanderpump Rules being put on pause. And they're not filming yet for season 12 with no film date in sight. Let's see what Lisa Vanderpump was saying. Now, this came out prior to the announcement that Vanderpump Rules was being put on pause. This, this is an article from Reality Blurb, and this happened before the announcement came. So this is Lisa Vanderpump on Ariana, on Kyle, on Tom, on all of it. So let's read what she had to say, and then we'll dive in. Lisa Vanderpump is sharing her thoughts on Ariana Maddox not wanting the Vanderpump Rules cast to be friends with her ex-boyfriend, Tom Sandoval, while also shading the delayed opening of Ariana and Katie Maloney's sandwich shop and addressing several topics related to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and its cast. Now, as we know now, something about her new opening date is May 22nd of this year. So in 22 days, the door should be open. As we saw in the last episode, there was some issues going on between the girls and the girls, I mean, well, the women, the women, Ariana and Katie with Penny, 
you know, Penny wanted to be a partner. She wanted more money. And to me, I felt Penny was kind of being a snake and she got her husband, who is allegedly a lawyer, to create the, to trademark something about her behind the girl's back. I personally think that's Penny being very snakish. If you want to trademark, if you want to be a partner on a business, you need to establish that from jump. Because this is what happens when you don't. I'm going to go on a little tangent and then I'll get back to this. This is what happens when you don't. You are someone like a penny who you are smart. You've been here before. You know what you're doing. You're putting your expertise in it, your time. And you're working with two people who maybe haven't been here before. They don't really know what they're doing. They may think they do, but they really don't. But what they do have is brand recognition, brand equity, brand awareness, because they're on a little show called Vanderpump Rules on Bravo. And we've just had Scandal, and you have everybody wanting to support them. So you have two people who want to go into business together, probably a little green, not really sure what they're doing on the business side, but they have all of the equity in the sense of brand awareness and a built-in audience. You, Penny, your equity is in your knowledge, your expertise, your professionalism. You've been here before. You know what you're doing. If from jump, you are not very clear on what everybody's role is, how much everybody is going to be paid, what's going to happen is a little thing we like to call resentment. I think Penny got very frustrated, got extremely resentful. I think she was like, I'm older, I'm wiser, I'm doing all of the work, I'm putting everything in, I know everything that's going on. These two little twits are over here acting like they know what they're doing. Sure, they're the face, but that's pretty much it. I'm pissed and I resent all of this stuff. And now I want to be a partner. Now I want more money. Now I want more blah, 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 blah. And I think that's what's that's what has happened here, because that happens a lot when you get these very two different types of people together and one has one type of equity and another one has a different type of equity. And you're not very clear up front about what those rules are, or maybe you are clear up front about what those rules are, as Ariana was saying. But again, I don't really trust Ariana because she talks like she knows what she's talking about a lot. And then it turns out she was full of air and full of crap. And it's not that way at all. She did that with Tom in the house. She did that with a lot of stuff. So she talks with her whole chest a lot. And it turns out not to be true. So I don't know. Whether or not they had that clear up front or not, it built a very resentful dynamic. With that being said, unfortunately, Penny, unless you were very clear about all of that up front, and you chose to take whatever role you took, your resentment is just your resentment. That's what it is. I personally think it's very snakish to then go have your husband, who is a lawyer, trademark the something about her name behind the girl's back. That's a very snake move. If you feel resentful, if you feel like I have all the knowledge, I have all the expertise, I'm doing all of the work, then you need to sit them down and you need to say, these are my new terms and conditions. Let's find a way to meet in the middle or to compromise or whatever the case is so we're both happy or figure it out or I'm cutting bait and I'm gone. You don't trademark somebody else's idea because that was all Katie. Something about her was all Katie. Ariana just hitched on for the ride. Penny came on because of her expertise. But to be perfectly honest with you, something about her was all Katie Maloney's baby. But to go behind somebody's back and to trademark their idea, their intellectual property, simply because you have the know-how and the where-how to do it, to me is a snake-ass move. Snake-ass move. And the fact that Lisa Vanderpump was like, I like Penny and I've worked with her before and I'm worried at the girls that are go. I don't know. I love Lisa Vanderpump 100%, but I think in this position, if Lisa, if Penny had done that to Lisa Vanderpump, I think her tune would be very, very different. If somebody went behind Lisa Vanderpump and Ken's back and trademarked Vanderpump Villa without their knowledge, I'm pretty sure she'd be very, very pissed. Allegedly, word on the street is that, you know, 
they have the opening date now and they figured out the salary with Penny and everything. I hope that is true. I hope they had a kumbaya. I hope they got everything in writing. Who knows? But I would just say, you guys, let this be a very cautionary tale. Don't, even though you think you can trust somebody and they come highly recommended and they're a professional, blah, blah, blah. Do your own due diligence. Trademark your own stuff. LLC your own stuff. Before you post anything publicly, before you go into business or partnership with anybody else, you yourself, trademark your stuff, copyright your stuff, get your own LLC, everything owned by you. And then if you want to branch out and be public and partner with people and all that stuff, knock yourself out. But don't put yourself in a position, in a position to be snaked the way Katie and Ariana were, because I would be pissed. I'd be pissed at myself for not trademarking it. And I would be pissed at the person who went behind my back and did it. It's just dirty to me. It's just dirty. You don't do that. Anyway, back to the story. While also shading. Oh, we got there. Okay. Okay. So Lisa shared the secret to her marriage to Ken Todd and explained why she doesn't feel that Ariana 38 is being reasonable. I understand that, but we also have to understand they've been friends for so many years and they've had the experience of being on a television show, which is very bonding for like 14 years. So you can't just walk away from everything Lisa explained during the April 25th episode of Access Hollywood's Housewives Nightcap. Sheena Shea almost grew up with Tom Sandoval. As Pump Rule Season 11 continues to air, chronicling the months that followed Sandoval's affair with Rachel Raquel Levis, Ariana has seemingly become more and more distant from Sheena, and during an interview earlier this week, Allie described her relationship as tense. Also in recent episodes, Ariana and Katie have been struggling to open something about her. So we just went all into that. Okay, this is the thing. Do I agree with Lisa Ren- with Lisa Vanderpump? that Ariana is being unreasonable. Hell yes. Number one, this is the thing. For all of the Ariana blind supporters out there, and if you say anything about Ariana, everybody's jealous and blah, 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 knock it off. First and foremost, this is a job. All this friendship, la, 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 crap, knock it off. First and foremost, this is a job. I know it's reality TV about friends, blah, blah, blah. I'll repeat it again. First and foremost, this is a job. Not just for Ariana, not just for the cast, not just for the executives, but all of the crew too. What about the sound people and the assistants and the editors and lighting and all of that stuff? There's an entire production crew of people who pay their bills, feed their families, put food on the table through working shows like Vanderpump Rules, on Vanderpump Rules. So first and foremost, this is a job. And first and foremost, everybody is trying to keep their job. So for Ariana to somehow think the fact that her stale relationship with Sandoval ending trumps the livelihood of all of these people is unreasonable because the fact is without the cast interacting with Tom Sandoval, without the cast being able to get over it, find new storylines, have different dynamics, have different adventures, there is no show, which is why, as we now know, the show is being put on pause. The fact is the show being put on pause doesn't just mean that the cast isn't filming. It means everybody in production who was getting a paycheck from Shed Media or from Bravo or from Truly Original or from NBC is no longer getting that particular check. And usually the, these crew members and productions, usually they are people from day one. Sure, you have people come and go, but these crew members are usually people who have worked there for years. You know? So the fact that the show is being put on pause, even though I think that's the right choice, it also means that all of those people are out of a job. So when Lala is like, let's get Joe in, let's make up with with, with Tom Sandoval, when Sheena is like, we have to find a way to forgive, can you just say you're sorry, can we just move on? 
It's not because they're not being a girl's girl. It's not because they're jealous of Ariana. It's because everybody is trying to keep their jobs. And at the end of the day, that is going to trump any fake allegiance to Ariana, who has never been really nice to any of these girls ever. The only reason why her and Katie are even friends is because of something about her and because of um, mutual hatred for Tom Sandoval. When have Ariana and Katie ever been close? Never. Even when they were, even them doing something about her prior to Sandoval, Ariana did not take it seriously. And she's still not taking it seriously. She's booked and busy. She's going to Fiji for the summer to do Love Island. Is she going to be making sandwiches at something about her? Probably not. So that is what everybody, not everybody, because we are smart. But everybody out here who's like, oh, Sheena makes everything about her. Lala's so mean. <laughs> they're such haters. No, they're not haters. They are 1099 independent contractors trying to make sure they still have a job. Nobody is hating on Ariana. Nobody is jealous of Ariana. The issue is Ariana is booked and busy. She's fine. She's doing Love Island. She's good. But the rest of these people still need that check. Not just the cast, who also need that check, but everybody else needs the check, right? These people are not working for free. These people are not working because they like you, Ariana. These people are working because this is their job and this is how they survive. And unfortunately, all of those people will now be out of a job. So I agree with Lisa Varnapup. And don't forget, Lisa isn't just the executive producer in a fluffy way. She's a real executive producer. And the difference between being an executive producer versus a producer are two different things. A producer is somebody whose boots on the ground. They are with you. These are the people we see when they break the fourth wall and they're there talking to them. They're, they're on the vacations with them. They're on the sprinter vans. You know, they're kind of in like, you know, they're, they're, regular, you know, sneakers and clothes with their little headsets and everything. Those are boots on the ground producers. The executive producers are the ones you will never see when they break the fourth wall because those are the people who are in the offices. Those are the people who are signing the checks. Those are the people who are making those type of strategic decisions. Those are the executive producers. Those are the ones who are worrying about the job of the producers who are the boots on the ground. That's why when they break the fourth wall, you don't see Lisa Vanderpump in street clothes with a headset on and a clipboard because she's an executive producer, right? So when she says that, she's thinking about her entire staff, not just Ariana needing a moment. So I do think Ariana is being very unreasonable, you know? Anyway. Kristen, you know, for for everything Kristen did, she never told everybody not to be friends with Ariana because Ariana was having an affair with Tom when they were together. She was mad at Ariana. She brought in Miami Girl, all that stuff. But she wasn't like the whole world needs to hate him because because he was my man and you were cheating on him. I don't remember that. I don't remember Ariana thinking no, everybody should not be friends with me because I made out with Kristen's boyfriend while they were still together. I don't. I never heard Ariana say everybody should cut me out. And to be honest with you, I do think the whole Rachel thing was salacious. But to be perfectly honest, like, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but it's really not the end of the world. It's really, really not. There are much bigger tragedies going on in the world, you know, and I get it hurt Ariana and I'm not minimizing that. And my heart goes out to her and I, and I know that's traumatic and I know it's hurtful and I know it's painful and I'm not taking that away from her. But there comes a point where you just have to kind of get a little bit perspective and kind of get real. Like at this point, like enough is enough, you know. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see. Okay, so moving on to The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Lisa said a return will never happen in a million years. Oh, that breaks my heart. I left that with a cloud of dust behind me. Never. There's no way, she stated. 
I'm on Vanderpump Villa, Vanderpump Rules, and I'm with Gordon Ramsay. And being with Gordon is like being on the housewife she shared. But there is something that would make her return. Like if they fired them all and it was the real housewives of Beverly Hills, I would do that. She admitted before adding that she loves Garcelle. Garcelle and I could could do, could be the real housewives of Beverly Hills. I like it, but there's a few of them that aren't very nice. She continued after Kyle Richards was mentioned. She even asked, Kyle, who? When a reconciliation was suggested. As for the recent departures of Crystal Con Minkoff and Anna Marie Wiley, Lisa asked, who's Anna Marie? Lisa, you better slay. Also during the interview, Lisa was asked about the secret to her decades-long marriage to Ken. There were no secrets. Tenacity. Putting each other first, she began. She then jokingly added, I told you, I'm always looking for somebody else. I just didn't find them yet. <laughs> Oof. So what do you guys think about all of this? You know, what do you think about Lisa basically putting Ariana on blast and being like, it's unreasonable for her to think that the entire cast needs to shun Tom Sandoval when the entire show is built around mess. To be honest with you, the entire show is built around people lying, cheating, and being messy. That is the show. That is the show. I mean, unfortunately, every girl on that show has been cheated on. Every man on that show has cheated. And I get Scandaval got so magnified and got so huge and blown up. But every woman on that show has been cheated on. They have. Sheena's been cheated on. Katie Shore has been cheated on. And Lala. All of them. Schwartz has cheated. Jax, when he was on the show, has cheated. Brock allegedly is currently sliding into people's DMs with other people. Um, James, we know he's, he's cheated too. It's kind of what the show has been built on. And I agree with Lala. They cannot build a show around Ariana. You know what I'm saying? And to be honest with you, <laughs> Lala went through a lot worse with a child. And I'm not trauma comparing like this trauma is bigger than that trauma. I'm just being very realistic. Everything that came out about Randall and all of the allegations against him and all the fraud suits and all of the assaults and alleged, alleged, alleged and weird stuff going on with minors, allegedly. All this crazy stuff because, you know, he's in Holly weird going on with him. And she literally had to flee her home with her child. But yet they gave her no grace. But we want to act like Ariana is this queen when she is like comfy with her dogs in a multi-million dollar mansion. Make it make sense. And I'm not negating either of their pain. And I'm not negating either of their trauma. But there does need to be a little bit of perspective of what's going on here. That's just kind of where I land with it. But as always, I want to know what you guys think. Put it down below. What do you think about Vanderpump Rules being put on pause? Are you like me? I think Lisa Vanderpump is kind of over Vanderpump Rules. I think her focus will be Vanderpump Villa moving forward. I think her focus will be um, the Gordon Ramsay show. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get another show out of Lisa. I feel in my gut, or maybe a little birdie told me, that Lisa has another show in the works that will probably replace Vanderpump Rules. Because I don't think Vanderpump Villa really replaced Vanderpump Rules, but I think she probably has another show under her works. She also has The Valley. So Lisa is booked and busy. Also, at the opening of her, of her restaurant, Wolf, it was only the cast of The Valley that was there. There was nobody from Vanderpump Rules there. That's a huge statement. And also, if you're watching the after show of Vanderpump Rules... I'm not being, I'm not trying to age shame anybody because obviously that's not how I roll. But to be snarky, it seemed like everybody on Banner Pump Rules seemed to be very old and bitter. And when I mean old, I don't mean age. I just mean like weathered. You know what I mean? Because they're all still very young. They're, they're in their 30s and 40s. That is super young. You know what I mean? That is still super young, super vibrant super vibrant so when I say old I don't mean age shaming I mean they seem old and like haggard withered 
and they all seem so bitter, especially talking about Lisa. And it's like, you guys, all of you actors, model actors, would not have a career. I mean, in another universe, another timeline, another dimension, another matrix, sure, maybe you are Meryl Streep. But in the timeline reality we're living in, You have all of your money, all of your businesses, all of your platforms because of Lisa Vanderpump casting you on Vanderpump Rules. You don't have to kiss her butt, but show some respect. Have some integrity for self. You know, Jax talks about Lisa Vanderpump like a dog. Stassi does. Um, Brittany does. Kristen Doty does. I would say the only people who kind of hold back are Lala, Sheena, and Katie. Katie maybe kind of says something here or there, maybe a little bit, but they kind of hold back. Ariana talked about her like a dog when she was with Tom Sandoval. Um, And to me, it's giving very old, bitter, miserable energy. So I think Lisa's kind of over it. I think she's kind of like, would you have your $1.6 million mansion? Would you have your $3.1 million mansion? Would you would you be on, you know, Dancing with the Stars, Love Island, spinoff shows, doing X, Y, and Z? Would you have your businesses and your all this, that, and the third without Vanderpump Rules? And that answer and the reality that we currently live in is no. Humble yourself. Again, humility is not being a doormat. It's not kissing butt. It's knowing your worth with gratitude. Humble yourself. So if I was Lisa Vanderpump, I'd feel some type of way too. And I'd be like, you know what? Off with your heads. I'm going to go on the valley. I know Jackson Kirsten's are there, but she's just using them because of, you know, all of their drama and stuff. But I'm going to get these new couples in. I'm going to go over here on Vanderpump Villa. I'm going to go over here and do this. I'm going to go work in this secret show. I'm going to go do me and you miserable buddies can pop off. That's what I think is going on. Oof. But that's kind of how I feel. So as you guys know, be sure to like, subscribe, and share and put everything down below. So with that, I'm going to drop the link in case anybody wants to come up and chat with me. But in the meantime, I will take some of your candy cane questions and the comments. All right.